Russia and the United Arab Emirates offered diplomatic support to Telegram founder Pavel Durov after his arrest in France, but he decided not to accept the offer, Politico reported, citing sources. Both Russia and the United Arab Emirates offered Durov diplomatic assistance, which he declined, the publication notes. Telegram is literally clinging to the popular saying which goes, desperate times call for desperate measures. This follows after the messaging app recently got embroiled in a scandal following the arrest of its founder Pavel Durov in France last month, according to Cohen Speaker Media Outlet. With this policy change, Telegram users may now flag content in their private chats that they deem inappropriate or illegal. The flagged content will then be reviewed by moderators. This update, without a doubt, marks a major deviation from Telegram's previous policy that did not give room for moderating private chats. Durov was detained at Le Bourget Airport on August 24. On August 28, his preliminary custody was over. The entrepreneur was delivered to a court, where the prosecutor charged Durov with six offenses, which include complicity in the administration of an online platform that enabled illegal transactions, committed within a criminal group. The offense, according to a statement from the Paris prosecutor's office, is punishable by up to 10 years in prison and a fine of 500, 000 euros. By decision of an investigating judge, the entrepreneur went under judicial supervision with an obligation to post bail of 5 million euros. He also has to appear twice a week at a police station and is forbidden to leave France. Hundreds of Ukrainian troops from four brigades are trying to hold a vulnerable salient south of Pokrovsk and the town of Selidovo despite the critical threat of being encircled. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, this threat has been known for some time and military experts have been advising the Ukrainians to retreat from this area to avoid being encircled, cut off and destroyed. But the Ukrainians in the area are not ready to retreat. Recently, they engaged in a brutal firefight at a key road and rail junction between the stronghold and the main Ukrainian sector in the north and won, the analyst wrote. He notes that the Russians are trying their best to break through to Selidovo, which is a stronghold on the front line between Pokrovsk and Ukrainsk. As the analyst explains, the capture of Selidovo is of utmost importance for both sides. As long as the Ukrainians hold out in the south, they pose a threat to the left flank of the Russian 2nd Combined Arms Army and the 90th Tank Division, the main parts of the local Russian force grouping that are moving towards Pokrovsk. According to the Center for Defense Strategies, over the past week, the Russian command has shifted its focus from a direct offensive on Pokrovsk to an advance toward Selidovo and the surrounding areas in the east and southeast, and if they succeed, it will allow them to advance further toward Pokrovsk and secure the left flank of the forces advancing from the south. At the same time, the Ukrainian defense forces are trying to make sure that the Russians do not succeed and are fighting to maintain a salient south of Pokrovsk in order to maintain a threat to the Russian left flank. The Ukrainians clearly do not want to lose the roads and rails connecting Pokrovsk to Selidovo to Ukrainsk and the adjacent salient as long as they continue to actively fight for Pokrovsk and not just plan a retreat. At least, for now, the Ukrainian positions are intact and the roads connecting them are free. For now, Pokrovsk is holding out, as is the entire southern front. Forbes notes. <laughs>